In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about IFS or independent suspension systems, its strengths and weaknesses, and solid axle, live axle, or beam axle, which are all the same thing, their strengths and weaknesses. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four-wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you can get those notifications. So right at the start, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to Jamie at TJ's Forby Park. That's where we're filming today. This is a four-wheel drive park which has got camping and four-wheel driving and it is absolutely fantastic. It's about two hours west of Sydney and if you want a great getaway, come on up here. Now, I'd also like to say thank you to Terrain Tamer, who's letting us use the Hilux here behind me. We've been up here on a commercial shoot with them today and they said, look, go for it. So aside from that, all of the action you see in this video has been filmed here on private property with Jamie's permission. Righto, let's hook into this. So let's sit in the middle of a creek with a $5,000 laptop, shall we? So the two vehicles I've got here today, the Hilux, is independent front end suspension and live axle rear suspension and the 105 series Land Cruiser is front and rear live axle or solid axle or beam axle suspension systems. Now let's just focus on the IFS or the Hilux for a moment. The independent element of that is that the front wheels will travel independent of each other. So if this wheel hits a bump it goes up and goes down and this wheel knows nothing about it. That is a big advantage when it comes to ride of the vehicle and it's because of an effect called unsprung weight. There is less weight that goes up and down or mechanical components that go up and down when you hit that bump. That's unsprung weight. Now if we focused on the live axle vehicle you've got a whole chunk of metal with arms and steering and knuckles and wheels and tires and differential centers that gets movement in it when it hits the bump. That's, so that's unsprung weight. The I, uh, solid axle vehicle has a lot of unsprung weight. The IFS vehicle has very little unsprung weight. That is a significant advantage when it comes to ride quality as a general rule. Now the only time you're really going to see that in play is if you had this vehicle identical vehicle with an IFS suspension and then a solid axle suspension and went for a drive and all other elements were the same, i.e. coil spring weights and shock absorber style, all of that was the exact same. That would be about the only time you're really going to see a significant difference because at the end of the day, vehicles are different in many different facets of them. Their, their springs can be different designs. They can be coil springs, leaf springs, or um, torsion bars. They can have different shock absorber designs and so on. So there's lots of different factors that affect the way the vehicle handles. So as a general principle, IFS do handle better because they have that less unsprung weight, but that doesn't mean that a solid axle vehicle cannot handle really well. Some of the drawbacks with the IFS suspension system are that the componentry, and there is a lot of it, is generally fairly light fabrication. As in, the arms are made out of pressed steel and sort of engineered, very clever engineering, but more often than not, you will find an independent suspended vehicle will have failures out there on the trails for relatively simple mishaps, i.e. you hit a rock or a, a log a little bit too hard and all of a sudden you've got a problem. We had that on a recent four-wheel drive trip, well, it was probably about two years ago now, and a, a, a young fella in his Hilux hit an innocent looking rut and he bent the control arm that went from the lower control arm up to the, um, up to the upper strut. And it was bent and we had to get him fixed and it was a relatively minor hit. That hit in this vehicle would not have been a problem because of that solid axle design where it's a lot more beefier, it's a lot more steel in there and they're just generally stronger. That's not to mean that you can't break these either. Now as a general rule, the independent vehicle has a greater amount of under vehicle clearance. That is the difference between the bash plate and the ground to a live axle vehicle. But the significant disadvantage with the independent vehicle. You see, when you hit an obstacle, like say a sudden uprise on a watershed or something, both front wheels in the Hilux are going to compress 
and therefore the belly of the vehicle is going to get closer to the ground so you actually end up with significantly less under vehicle clearance and you will often see on an independent vehicle the bash plates and that front part of the vehicle have been damaged from that sort of situation happening. As opposed to the live axle vehicle here, when those two front wheels hit an uprise like on a watershed or a sudden mound, that beam axle is going with those wheels and it will go up. So your under vehicle clearance will remain the same all the time. There's another element with the solid axle design and that is the lowest point is only under the differential center. Outside of that, there might be some control arms, but there's often a very high area, which means that you can get over a stump or around a rock because you've got quite a significant amount of clearance in certain parts of the vehicle, as long as you know where those parts are. The independent suspended system isn't so good for carrying load and for towing, those sort of duties. That's why a dual cab utility which is designed to carry load has that live axle in the back of it and when it comes to towing you want that stability that the live axle is going to give to the vehicle by having that as well so an independent suspended vehicle will do the job but it won't do it as well as a solid axle or beam axle suspension system one of the advantages of the ifs is that the total weight of the vehicle can be reduced because all of those suspension components and that are relatively light in comparison to the solid axle vehicle. That means you get a slight fuel saving. It also means that the load carrying of the vehicle can be higher than if that vehicle was fitted with a solid axle suspension system. And the IFS system is also quite complex. You've got lower control arms, upper control arms, a strut, coils, springs, shock absorbers, brakes, steering arms, an inner and an outer CV, an axle shaft, rubber boots, and other componentry all jammed into that space between the chassis and the wheel. And it's all got to work in unison together to get the job done. Now, off-road, that can pose reliability issues. It doesn't always, and I'm not saying that they're a rubbish system by any stretch, because numerous vehicles are running them very reliably, but it does mean that they're a more complex system than a live axle suspension system, which has a CV, a differential, a couple of axles, a few wheel bearings, and some brakes, and that's about it, really. It's a very robust and solid, reliable type of design that can be treated and misused and will continue to do the job within reason, let's be fair. Now, it sounds like I'm kind of bagging out on the IFS system. I'm not for or against. All of my vehicles are live axle because of the type of four wheel driving I do. But there's numerous people very happy with the independent suspension system because it suits their requirements and their needs and their budget and all of the other elements that lead us to buy a certain or particular vehicle. So this video is not about bagging out a particular system despite the fact I personally have a preference. So let's talk about CV joints or constant velocity joints. They are in the drivetrain of both vehicles and they allow for in the solid axle vehicle, the, the wheels to turn when you're steering and the drive coming from your axle to go through a flexible joint, being the CV joint, and drive the wheel whilst you've got the steering lock in there. In the IFS vehicle, not only does the CV have to allow for steering, it also has to allow for the wheels to travel up and down. So in these vehicles, those CV joints have a massive job to do and they do it really, really well. Where they start to struggle is the more angle they have to work in, the more they incline to break and the weaker they become. In the solid axle vehicle, we can manage that weakness by only getting on the power and really dialing some numbers when we're in a straight ahead position and not when we've got some steering lock in. But with the IFS vehicle, you could have a wheel off the ground and have maximum articulation in there. The CV joint is now working at an extreme angle and you start dialing some numbers and you can explode a CV joint relatively easy. Now, if you put a suspension lift into the IFS vehicle, it means those CV joints are constantly working at an extreme angle. 
and therefore they can be more prone to braking. That's why it would be important if you're going to raise the suspension in an IFS vehicle, you put a good quality, I would recommend aftermarket CV joint that has got proven results for that vehicle that you own and operate. On the solid axle vehicle, the CV joint is actually totally encased inside the knuckle as we call it. So it cannot be exposed to any sticks or rocks or off-road abuse. But in the IFS vehicle, they have a rubber boot to protect the CV joint and make sure that the lubricant, the grease, stays in there with those ball bearings and does the job it's meant to do. Now, if that boot gets damaged from a stick or a stone or fatigues over time and contaminants get in there with that grease, it's not long until you're gonna have a failure with those CV joints. With the solid axle vehicles, when you wanna lift them, it's really quite easy. Put a set of springs in there and uh, maybe change the caster correction or do a few minor adjustments and you can put a suspension lift in those vehicles. In the independent suspension system, a small lift is relatively easy, but once you start looking for a bit of height, you're really going to spend a big amount of money. And generally speaking, the solid axle suspension system is going to articulate or flex a lot more than the IFS system will. Having said that, there are independent suspension systems out there that articulate extremely well, but they're in high-end high, high -end trophy trucks and ultra four race cars, maybe not the, the Hilux that's running down the road. So in summary, the IFS system is a very good system. Multiple vehicles run it. Many people are very happy with it. There's a lot of expertise that uh, out there of people who understand how to modify them and make them work in the off-road environment reliably. And so if you're looking to use it in a hardcore off-road environment, absolutely go for it. Just make sure that you're engaging good expertise to make sure you're getting what you require from your independent suspension system. It's horses for courses. How are you going to use your four wheel drive? What are you gonna do with it? Are you just touring? Are you doing towing? Are you gonna go hardcore? Are you a weekend warrior? Whatever it is, if you understand how the two suspension systems work, it'll ensure that you buy the right vehicle that's gonna suit your requirements. Now, this is my opinion, and I'd love you to tell me I'm wrong, or whatever down in the comments down below. But it's my opinion that an IFS system from a manufacturer is probably cheaper to build and probably easier to sell because they can sell the features of, it's got better comfort, but they don't give you the comparison. You know, they don't make two of these vehicles, one IFS, one solid, and you can go for a test drive in either and go, oh, you're dead right. Because between you and me, this vehicle is far more comfortable than that to drive on a dirt road, but it's got a fairly modified suspension in it. Is that the only reason? I don't know. I actually couldn't tell you if this being off-road is because it's got the wrong spring rate in there and needs a load in it or not. I don't know. Make your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Would you prefer IFS, solid axle? Hey, it's all out there. As long as you're out bush, we'll come to TJ's. Not a bad place either. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.